So I think we've established uh, for hogfish you need to fish basically right on the bottom. The biggest mistake people make is is not doing that. They're more fishing a couple feet off the bottom. Their bait might hit the bottom. They crank up a couple couple reels, or they have too long of a leader. There's there's certain things you need to avoid when you want to target hogfish specifically. And so what I'm going to kind of go over here is just the basic rigs that you should be using. Uh, basically when I'm out fishing I've got four go-to rigs. The first is just a standard knocker rig. Uh, it's pretty much a go-to. The second is a real short leader with a swivel weight. The third is a, is a hog ball or hog ball XL. I'll explain what that is. And then the fourth will be a jig head. A jig head's a little more versatile. You might get some more grouper, snapper, all that type of stuff on it just to kind of to mix it up. And for rod, my go-to rod is a is an eight foot, basically medium rod. Uh, this is an MHX, it's a custom blank, um, one that I built. So I made a little fancy uh, pen clash reel, 30 pound braid, and typically you know, 30 pound leader. Um, I like an eight foot rod, get the bait a little further away from the boat, feel the bite a little better. And also, uh, hogfish tend to, to fight a little sideways. Uh, on this is a Hogball XL. Uh, that's a three ounce. This is the one that I was using most recently. Got two hogs on it, broke off a real big hog. Um, worked extremely well. It sits right on the bottom. Um, all the little things, MHX uh, blank, then American Tackle, Microwave Guides, all the way up, eight foot rod. Um, Shimano makes a real nice 8-foot rod, the, the Terramar. Also, St. Croix makes a real nice rod. The 8-foot uh, Inchor series, if you can get them, you know, 12 to 25, that rate, range. Real good stuff. So, for rigging, the old school way to rig was a swivel, a weight, Swivel weight and a hook. And so what that would look like, that would look something like this. So you've got your swivel with the a leader that goes and then attaches to your you know, line to line knot with your braided line. You got your weight that slides up and down. And then, this is the mistake people would be making fish for hogfish. Their leader would be a bit too long. Going down, this is a basic fish finder rig. So you got probably two or three feet of leader here. So that bait would hit the bottom. And then if you're using a shrimp, shrimp would end up kind of slowly falling down and your grunts are hitting it and you got about 18 inches off the bottom here it's not what you want for hogfish that and this would be when we were grinding through you know dozens of grunts to get one or two hogfish this was the rig we were using the rig you should be using so you've got your line to line that would go up to your rod then you put your weight on then right to the the hook. This is called knocker rig. So what this effectively does is keeps that bait right wherever the weight's going in, in some for the most part. So bait's going down, hits the bottom. If you reel your tension out and you can feel the weight on the bottom, it'll look something like that when it's sitting on the bottom. So your shrimp now is sitting right there, bam, on the bottom. That's what you want. So you want to reel your, your slack out and then still feel the weight on the bottom, have it pinned right to it. Uh, some of the problems you'll get with this is, you know, if you're not really paying attention, that fish will get, you know, trailed behind because a lot of times as the bait's going down, that weight will slide. And then your weight hits the bottom and next thing you know, it's still up high, much higher than you want it to be. You want it to be right, reel that slack out right on the bottom. And you, a lot of times with this rig, you won't feel a bite because say your, your line's here, you're, you could feel the weight, your bait will get picked clean with this little bit of slack in it. 
So, but still very effective. You want it about a you know two ounce weight. This is a two ounce, or actually I'm sorry, this is a three ounce. Something heavy enough to get down quick and through all the other fish. Now the evolution of that to kind of control exactly where your bait is is the swivel weight. Uh, this we found a little more effective fishing for hogfish. You can, uh, same thing, line to line knot, a little bit of leader. If you go braid straight to this top swivel, you'll notice a lot of, a lot of kinks and uh, twists in your line. Your bait might come up tangled. So try to avoid that. You want a little bit of leader, probably about you know, 18, 20 inches. Uh, another piece of advice, make this bit of leader heavier. So probably about a 40 or 50 pound. Heavier than your main leader. So if you have 40 or 50 here, you have 30 here, you get stuck in the rocks. This part will break, you get your weight back. Uh, so this is probably about 18 inches. This is actually a rig I was using for snapper. Not exactly you know, how long if I was fishing for hogfish. What I would be doing, I'd be cutting this off to make it much shorter. So now, I've got maybe 12 inches of leader. And same thing. You want this to hit the bottom. It's much closer, so it's not going to get too high up. And that shrimp typically will try to get right down on the bottom before you know anything else will hit it. This is a, a, a pretty effective rig because it gives the shrimp, if it's still alive, a little bit of, of life to get off, you know, six, eight inches. To get kind of some curiosity going, um, you know that's what you want hogfish to. They want you want them to see what's around, so they could see this bait, and then down on the bottom that's what you want. You can feel pretty much everything because you're always in contact. If you've got any slack, you, you'll be able to feel pretty much every bite with this. And so then I started to kind of develop um, new rigs specifically for hogfish. This is a jig that was designed for bass fishing around heavy cover, rocks, structure, and whatnot. And I tailored it knowing, hey, I want to fish my hogfish right down on the bottom. Uh, I'd name it a hog ball. With that hog ball you want, you know, you can use a little bit longer leader, two or three feet. Hogfish aren't very leader shy. Uh, your more leader shy fish are going to be your snapper and grouper. So you can use a heavier leader and it might actually scare those fish away to get you more hogfish. So this allows your bait to get right down to the bottom, sit there, and your shrimp's just doing this if it's alive. It's right in the sand. That's what you need for catching hogfish. So just pretend this is a shrimp. You can thread it on, you can hook it in the tail, you can do whatever. So it is not gonna have enough to get this thing off the bottom. Uh, I make these up to 1.25 ounces which is uh, pretty heavy to get past, you know, all the, the grunts, grouper, snapper, if you're targeting just hogfish. Um, it's very effective. I've learned this is pretty much my go-to. And a lot of people ask, do colors, colors matter? I don't think so. I, I, I typically like, you know, pink or something bright if I'm going for hogfish just to start. They seem to be more curious than anything. If I'm fishing snapper and whatnot, I, I do love this gold color. There's, it's a translucent gold, and it looks an awfully lot like a shrimp uh, in terms of the color and, and you know, shine that it gives out. Uh, one other theory of, of thinking is a lead color or a dark color looks pretty much like a rock. So if you've got a bait down there that's over here, and you're fishing in you know rocky, grassy areas, they're not necessarily going to even notice this because it just looks like something that's naturally down there. You got your bait pinned to the bottom. Hogfish comes in, bam, and that's that's what you want. Next size up with the hog ball, the hog ball XL. These start at two ounces. This is a two ounce. This is a three ounce. This is what I used the most recent trip offshore. This really is effective at getting through all the grunts, and getting right to the bottom and getting uh, you know right how you want to fish for those those hogfish it is what i will probably start out with from here on out when i'm going hog fishing um, a two ounce is a, is a good weight it's a light enough where you can feel pretty much everything a three ounce definitely gets right down to the bottom i think if i'm going to be using a three ounce i'm going to be keeping a circle hook on it with a with a bigger circle hook targeting bigger hogfish a bigger hook 
is not easy for those smaller hogfish to, to be hooked. I don't like hooking the smaller hogfish because they'll typically die, uh, especially females. You'll, you'll see them come up with their scales kind of popped out. So the bigger hook will effectively eliminate some of that uh, the bycatch with the smaller hogfish. Um, also when you're using a circle hook on this type of rig, you can just reel. So if it's sitting on the bottom and the hogfish has it in its mouth, you reel. It's going to be pretty effective in, in getting them in the corner of the mouth just based on how the bait sits on the bottom. Even if it lands like this, as it's coming up, the hogfish is looking down normally when they're rooting. So they're looking down eating like this. So they pick it up and then as it's coming up that circle hook's going to set itself. Um, circle hook's very effective for you know being on the bottom. Uh, a J hook as well. If that's the route you want to go, you can you know set it more. So if you feel any little bite, bam, set it. Um, must add makes a very good J hook, very sharp. Uh, this is a three aught, and uh, typically I'll, I'll use a little heavier, you know, bigger hook for hogfish, just trying to avoid some of the smaller ones. And so that's the uh, the hogball XL. And then there's the old standard jig head. Now a jig head is, is very effective working through the water column. So if you've got snapper you're seeing you know up a little little uh, shallower. So this is the translucent gold, very good for shrimp coloring, lead, white. These are all half ounce. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm knowing I'm in an area with hogfish, I think a half ounce is probably a pretty good size because it, uh, if it's not getting hit on the drop, it'll sit on the bottom. And you'll know when the snapper are there using a jig head because it'll get eaten on the way down, especially when you're using a lot of shrimp. And so if you get a jig head down to the bottom, same thing, it's going to keep that bait pinned right where you want it, right in the strike zone. Uh, so very, very effective for keeping, you know, baits, baits down on the bottom. Um, and then so leader, just depending on, you know, what type of structure I'm fishing. I usually don't go any lighter than 30 unless I'm trying to get some bycatch with some mangrove snapper. Because uh, a lot of times when you're fishing hogfish, you're going to get grouper, you're going to get snapper. They're going to be mixed in. Um, 30 is pretty good. Just you know, you might get some breakoffs when those bigger fish hit. Um, 40 is is about as heavy as I'll go when I'm, you know, targeting hogfish. Um, I don't think they're very leader shy. Just from you know how they act, they're very curious and they, they typically don't even really notice the leader. The heavier leader might keep some of those other fish off. If I'm looking to you know really horse some fish out, I might go 60. If I know it's a like very gaggy area. Uh, 60 will will you know effectively catch pretty much anything once you're hooked and hooked with it. Um, and like I said, if you're going to use this style of weight, maybe put 60 up top and then 40 down below. So when you break off, you're going to keep your 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 weight. You'll just end up losing your hook. You might have to retie the leader. And so what I plan on doing is kind of making a, a package. It'll be up on my website, CaptainChappy.com, with all these you know rigs that I'm using uh, I would say if you're targeting just hogfish you know you want the hogball and the hogball XL these are what get right to the bottom avoid all that other stuff when you're using a knocker rig when you're using a swivel weight you'll get more bycatch with the grouper and the snapper which you know isn't a bad thing I love doing that as, as well the hogball if you're gonna get a hogball you know depending on the depth um, a half ounce is pretty good in about 40 feet one ounce any deeper than that if you're really trying to get straight to the bottom you can just pretend your, your shrimp on there the baits you want are, are pretty much medium shrimp uh, or, or larger regulars something that can you know get the hogfish's attention if we're using jig heads we might rip a shrimp in half just to kind of see what's down there what's going on picking through the, the rest of them so that's uh, effectively what you want. I'll be putting a package together, so look for it on CaptainChappy.com if you're looking to just kind of get all of this at once. And you'll see it and uh, put these methods to the test, and I'm sure you'll end up catching more hogfish than you've ever done before. Enjoy.